Honey, I'm really sorry I couldn't make dinner at the Taylors tonight. Oh, so am I. It was so good. You were so vague about why you were staying on after your surgery was over. Was there an emergency at the hospital? Oh, not exactly, no. <laughs> well, what was it exactly? Come on over here and sit down, please. Now, you have to promise me you're not going to get upset, okay? All right, I promise, but I already know it has something to do with Cal Jameson. You're right, it does. He called me tonight at the hospital from a floating rib. I was supposed to meet him there, but by the time I got changed and across the street, he was gone. You didn't see him? No, no. But he called a little later again and uh, accused me of bringing the police in on it because he knew Mitch Williams was there. Well, how did he know that? I don't know. I really don't. But I, uh, I asked him why he didn't call before he came into town. And he told me that he had called from Buffalo and left a message with Bobby Spencer. Now, she never gave me that message, so I've really got to talk to her. <sighs> well, he was probably just lying about it. No, no, honey, I really don't think so. I just, I have this feeling that Carol Jameson is telling the truth about everything. Well, how do you know that? What do you mean? Oh, well, Mitch Williams told me that he started getting some reports in on him, and he is wanted in this state on several charges. Ah, oh, it just gets worse and worse. Honey, come on. Don't let it worry you, all right? We'll get it all straightened out very soon, I promise you. Listen, I'm really pushed. I'm going to take a shower and hit the sack, okay? Yeah, go ahead. I'll be there in a minute. All right. If Mitch wants to bring someone to justice, he can find plenty of other people. Now, I want this job, Susan. I mean it. I see that. The question is, why? Because I can't take any more reminders about Stephen Lars. I can't stand it. It's upsetting me terribly when I should be calm and collected. It seems to me that that's something you're going to have to work out for yourself. You can't really expect the whole world to come to a halt for nine months while you go off and have your baby. I am not going to argue with you about it, Susan. But I warn you, if you don't find a way to keep Mitch from getting that report to Jeff, well, I'm going to have to take matters into my own hands. And just what is it that you're threatening me with exactly? Would you like me to go to Mitch and tell him the truth about your divorce and what kind of girl you really are? If you dare try anything like that, Heather, so help me, it's going to be the sorriest day of your life. Oh, I am so glad to see that it frightened you. Now, you listen to me. Mitch is the first chance at happiness that's come into my life in a long time. I also happen to love him, and I will not stand by and let you do anything to ruin that relationship. because my mother as much as told me that. Oh, well, what about Tracy? Hang Tracy. The house is in my mother's name for tax purposes, and Tracy's never shown any real affection for this place. My mother knows that. She also knows how much I... I love this place, and I always have. So she's decided to leave it to us. It's a beautiful house. It's, um... It's substantial. Mm -hmm. And one day when we retire from our careers, we'll come and we'll live here permanently. And then you can be the mistress of the manor. <laughs> what? That's so funny. Oh, the funny turns life takes. If 
the kids in the orphan agency. Lewis could see me now. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll send them all invitations to come and visit us in our declining years. <laughs> Unfortunately, they'll be in their declining years, too. They haven't already declined. Anyway, something to look forward to, isn't it? Boy, I'll see. I had a nice talk with your mother tonight. <laughs> Very interesting. Hmm? She told me something I almost hate to believe. What's that? Will you promise that you won't get angry or upset? Hmm, yeah, I promise. Okay. She told me that, that she's always felt it was Tracy that was responsible for breaking you and, and Grace Thompson up. That she was afraid that that you'd have a child with her and and that would negate her son's claim to your grandfather's trust fund. You are upset. Look, I didn't mean you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not upset. To be perfectly frank, I've suspected that for many years. I just hope it makes you realize, Monica, what a truly dangerous enemy my little sister can be. And I can't think of Tracy as an enemy. Monica, I told you one time when you said you felt sorry for Tracy, you better be on your guard because it only means that she's starting to spin her web. Well, I meant it. We're both going to have to watch her very carefully, believe me. Because nothing would give my little sister more pleasure than to destroy everything that we have together. I'd just like to see her try it. I wouldn't. Um, could, could we go back to talking about happy things? Uh, like, um, like being in this house in our declining years. With all our children, with all our grandchildren around us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, um, first we have to have the children, you see. You mustn't confuse the issue, mm -hmm. okay? So first things. First. Sort of fill up all the empty corners in the room. Do I? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you stopped by. I was a little worried after our talk earlier tonight. I didn't mean to worry you. I just wanted to impress upon you that I don't like lies and intrigue. Life's too complicated and it makes awful complications. And if we're just straight with each other, I think we'll get along just fine. Sorry. Hello? Susan, I don't have much time to talk. Jeff is in the shower right now, and I don't want him to overhear this, so maybe you'd better just listen. All right, go ahead. I can see that you didn't take my threat seriously because Jeff told me about Mitch's police report. But I want you to know if there's any more of it, I'll go ahead and do exactly what I told you. I think you're being a little unreasonable. I don't care. Do you want Mitch to find out what you're really like? If you do, then just let him go ahead with those reports on Jameson, because that's what will happen. All right. Goodbye. Who was that? You didn't do a whole lot of talk. Oh, that was my Aunt Alice. She just wanted to call and give me a message. She always does all the talking, and she kept it short, because she knew I was busy. Now, where were we? Well, I uh, just wanted to make sure that you were all right, Daddy, and that you had a good holiday. I had it was fine. But uh, no thanks to you. You know, I may never forgive you for not coming down here with uh, Alan and Monica. <laughs> no, you'll forgive me someday. I wanted to come, Daddy, but honestly, I couldn't get away. At least I'm calling to say that I love you and I miss you very much. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to hear it. But... Uh, I was beginning to think I might have been displaced in your affections by a certain Mr. Williams. Uh, not a chance. No one could ever take the place of my daddy. Daddy, I would like to ask you a favor, if I may. <laughs> Do I ever refuse you anything? Might be better for her if you did occasionally. What do you want, darling? Daddy. Do you still have very discreet people in very high places? Do you think I can tolerate any other kind? Of course I do. Wonderful. 
I'd like to find out everything I can about one Mitchell Williams, born Mitchell Wilemski in Cardonia, Pennsylvania. Just what do you mean by everything? Exactly that. Everything. How many brothers and sisters he had. How many day, times a day he washed his hands while he was growing up. Who his friends were in grammar school. His favorite food. Unfavorite. All right. All right, Tracy. I get the picture. What are you two up to now? <laughs> oh, Daddy. It's just like old times again, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is, darling. With one exception. What's that? Well, you may have asked me for things like more money or uh, my help in getting you a passing grade with a particular unmovable headmistress. But through 40 or 50 hysterical courtships and four marriages, you never asked my help with another man. There's never been another man, Daddy. Only you. <laughs> this one really has you buffaloed, hasn't it? All right. I never could keep anything from you. Yes, he certainly has. Buffaloed, hot and bothered, fascinated, you name it, and I'm it. <laughs> All right, I'll do what I can to get those vital statistics for him. Thanks, Daddy. This time, I need everything I can get my hands on to even make it to the finish line. Yeah, it should be an interesting race. I'll be there in the winner's circle waiting for the outcome. Well, you just put your money on the girl. She's got stamina, my friend, and she's never lost a race yet. Oh, no. This time I'm not betting. The odds are too evenly matched, I think. And that is exactly why I need your help. Good night, darling. Oh, say hello to Mother, will you? <laughs> Tonight, the passion and intrigue of Dynasty continue in a big two-hour episode. Constance Colby stuns Jeff with a $500 million offer. There's a romantic reunion for Adam and Claudia. And Crystal pays a fateful visit to Sammy Joe. Don't miss this special two-hour episode of Dynasty, 8.30 tonight online. And stay with us now for National 9 Morning News.